And welcome into Memorial Stadium as the number one ranked seeded Otterbein Cardinals welcome in at the John Carroll Blues Streaks. Welcome in everybody, Micah Flack along with you as John Carroll will look to upset the number one seed in the OAC tournament. As we get in this semifinal matchup, John Carroll lost to Otterbein late in October, October 18th to be exact. And Otterbein, what a season they have had, 12, two and three, made it through the OAC regular season, re, regular season unscathed, tying Ohio Northern and besting everyone else. Cars turn back Mountain Union, two and zero oh over the weekend to win the first OAC regular season title outright since 2017. What a team this is, as Jason Griffiths in his seventh season has got the Cardinals rolling. The game before this, the women of Otterbein fell to um, Ohio Northern 2-0s. They'll move on now to face either Baldwin Walls or John Carroll on the women's side. But now we'll have an opportunity as Otterbein will look to defeat John Carroll for the second time in a row. John Carroll escaped capital in the quarterfinals being the three seed. They won two to one on Tuesday with a double overtime goal from Steven Samuelson in the 110th minute. The score came just 21 seconds before the final whistle and avoided any penalty kicks or overtime. A huge momentum for the Blue Streaks. The Blue Streaks are the five-time defending OAC tournament champs. Made the NCAA second round last year before falling to national powerhouse John Hopkins. The Blue Streak started the year ranked in the top five, and then a month ago they played Otterbein, and they were ranked number 16, lost that game. And they've had a few setbacks in October as they lost to Capital Mountain Union and Otterbein, as I mentioned before. And now this game will be underway, and a quick kick will go down the right field line. Otterbein will be in the white today as the lights shine bright on a cold fall day in Westerville. Two back-to-back -back games for the Cardinals, both hosted at home. Now, if the Cardinals win this game, they'll either play Ohio, they might have an opportunity to play Ohio Northern and get a revenge on them, or Mount Union. Either way, if the Cardinals win tonight, they are the higher seed, the one seed after winning the OAC outright. That means that they would have home field advantage for the OAC championship game September, or excuse me, November 4th this Saturday. So a huge opportunity for each team. And we kind of mentioned that game last season. The Cardinals emerged 1-0 up at John Carroll in the middle of October on a goal from Carter Ely in the 82nd minute just before that game was about to end. A huge goal, and that really won them the title outright. They went in that game. John Carroll was number one in the OAC. And John Carroll would have emerged as a possible champion had they had just tied that game. But the defense held strong in the closing seconds as a blue streak shot went just right of the post. And Otterbein was able to escape University Heights with a massive win. And both teams coming off some very good seasons. Otterbein is on a seven game win streak coming into this game. And you look at John Carroll, they're on a two game win streak. John Carroll finished the season 13-5 and one. One of the top teams in the nation coming into the season had some early struggles as they lost two in a row early in the season to Denison and then at the time number 13 Calvin University up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is a very experienced team, and that will be a shot. Diving on the ground for is the goalkeeper of John Hopkins. That will be Brendan Mower, the sophomore from North Ridgeville, Ohio. Went to St. Edwards, a little bit close to home, right in that Cleveland general area. And this is a John Carroll team that loves running the 4-4-3. That's exactly what they like to do. Now some opportunities for both teams and see how close they keep it. John Carroll in the blue tonight on the 7 p.m. start. We kind of talk about how good Otterbein has been this season. Well, you look at John Carroll just as good. 
There's a pair of All-Americans on the field. Forward Will Isaac of Otterbein, his brother Nick, is sidelined today with an injury. And a huge blow, something to kind of mention later in. Just what a sad blow for him. Had six goals, six assists. Six assists, comes in for a sophomore season after transferring from Ohio State, decided to come play a season with his brother Will before he graduates. But Will Isaac and defender Isaac Coleman of John Carroll are a pair of All-Americans. Isaac earned second team honors as a junior. And Coleman took third team last fall. Coleman has more than 70 matches of experience on the J JCU back line. So going to be a very experienced leader for this John Carroll team that will look to keep Otterbein at bay. And then you look at Will Isaac and what he's done. Ranks second in the OAC with 27 points this year and has 111 for his entire career. And what an amazing career he has had. A shot goes well wide. And we hope, we wish Nick the best in recovery. It doesn't look like it will sideline him for too long. And they'll have an opportunity to get back into the game, possibly. You win the OAC tournament for both the men's and women's. It is an automatic qualifier into the NCAA championships. And that's going to be a huge point of emphasis for each team tonight. And if Otterbein wins tonight, he might play Mountain Union or Ohio Northern, who is the two seed. Ohio Northern and Otterbein tied 0-0 early in the season. That was the only tie in the entire conference season. And you look at Casey Thompson, the goalkeeper for Otterbein, what he's been able to do. He's a repeat OAC Defensive Player of the Week to end the regular season. He posted 12 saves and a pair of shutouts as he leads the conference in save percentage. And that'll be crucial for them to get any opportunities to kind of hold off this John Carroll opposition. And Thompson enters the night with a scoreless streak of 428 minutes. To put it into perspective, Otterby has not allowed a goal to a team since October 11th against Wilmington. That's how dominant this Otterbein team has been on their way to an outright OAC title. This is the first outright title for the team since 2017. And the Cardinals will look to try to get the better of the John Carroll roster. Just kind of look at what they're doing, just trying to get the ball away. Going to play aggressive is both teams. Know they want to get on the board early. And that's exactly what you need to do if you're both teams. There are some key players, though, for John Carroll, especially their front line. You look at what the... One of the forwards is doing, and you mentioned number nine, Jack Font from Erie, Pennsylvania. The season he has had has been like un, un, no other in his career. Has eight goals and two assists, the most assists since his freshman campaign, and the most goals since then as well. 18 points on the season. A little bit down in his shot and shot on goal percentage, but what a huge help he has been, and you know, a combined Fought and Wright have about eight goals apiece. And then one of their attacking midfielders as well has a seven goals. And they've just been through the roof on both sides. So that'll be the key part for Otterbein. Have not allowed a goal since October 11th. Well, they're going to look to try to have to carry that against John Carroll on the front three. And has over combined 20 goals. And Otterbein going to work it out. A 
And I'll go to the far side. Soderbaugh going to try to get past this defensive line of John Carroll. That's going to be tough to do and a lot of key pieces. And that will get right towards the end. Kind of mention John Carroll as they have, here, let's mention their defenseman, the defense, the senior, number three, Daniel Kalik, and the junior defenseman, Steven Samuelson, and the senior defenseman, Michael Kelly. And then the fourth guy in the 4 4 3, man in the back line, the senior, Isaac Coleman. And that's a back line that has a lot of experience for both teams. We mentioned how good Isaac Coleman has been at GCU. It's more than 70 matches of experience on the back line, and he'll be one of the key leaders that will help to try to shut out or keep this team from anything much while their offense looks to find rhythm. And Otterbein will fight for the ball. As John Carroll playing very aggressive up front, just trying to look for any possible way to get through the back line. That's going to be the, the main challenge for John Carroll. How do you find ways or slip through the cracks of an Otterbein team that hasn't allowed a goal since October 11th, almost a month since then? And that's going to be the question they're going to try to figure out. Had a lot of time, look over the film. Last time, Cardinals emerged and won against John Carroll 1-0, so you can look back at that, kind of see what you did wrong. And for both teams, you can kind of look at what you need to do better at if you're John Carroll, but look to also kind of upbring, kind of due to the best of your abilities, if you're Otterbein after winning that game and after a tough goal in the 82nd minute. And you're going to look for the All-American a lot in Will Isaac. He's the redshirt senior from Grove City, Ohio. And just a couple siblings on each team. Bailey and Aubrey Zanella on the women's team. And then Will and Nick Isaac on the men's team. So a lot of family. And then you look at Jason Griffiths. He was actually the club coach for both Will and Nick Isaac when they were growing up. So he knows what to expect from both of them. He's had Will for all five years that he's been here. Just got Nick after him transferring. Was someone he really pursued heavily, and that won't be well above the crossbar. But someone he really pursued and got here, and what a great opportunity it has been. He's gotten six points, excuse me, six assists and six goals. But Nick Isaac will be out at least for tonight after dealing with an injury. Taking control of the ball for John Carroll. Daniel Kalik. John Carroll will loop it back around to Isaac Coleman in the defense, just trying to we split it up a lot. And Will Isaac looking to track the ball, going for the slide was a the midfielder, and then coming up for it, a break, and that will go right through. And was both sprinting at it, but not able to get there. The through ball looked really clean. If the player could have gone there in time, but not able to. Now going for the pass is number 21, Hayden Hafner. Go all the way down. That will be out. Not able to get there is the John Hopkins player. Or excuse me, the John Carroll player. You can mention John Hopkins. What a powerhouse they are in Division Three. They were able to beat John Carroll in the second round. Pretty similar names. Both have John in them. See what both teams can do. Otterbein. Already has four shots, one of them on goal. John Carroll, only one, playing very quickly is Otterbein. Oh, 
will be passed. Just kind of back and forth trying to figure out what to do as Isaac Coleman passed it back to Daniel Kalick a couple times here and there. Now trying to set something up. We'll go back to Isaac Coleman. He'll have it. Pass it way back to Kalick. Just continuing to set up anything here. Will Isaac will come up. Kind of try, try to chase him around a little bit. Now Kalick have the ball. We'll try to slip it in. They do. Goes off an autobahn player, but we'll find someone in time. And that will be a shot very high. Grabbing onto the crossbar is Casey Thompson. Now an opportunity on the corner kick. The first of the night for either team. Waves the hands and will boot it in and be able to get it out of harm's way. That'll be another corner kick though. You talk about Casey Thompson, what he's done, just the the work that he has put in. Thompson will grab the ball. And what he's done between the poles, the amount of improvement between 21, 22, and now the 2023 season, his goals against average has gone down. Now to a .69, has his highest save rate at 72, and a save rate percentage at 86, almost 87%. Been the main one of the main reasons alongside this back line is why Otterbein has been so dominant this season. Ended the season with an eight and one conference record. John Carroll six and three. I'll go all the way up now to number 21 as Hayden Hafner. So he'll pass it back. Now back to Coleman. Just trying to find the gaps in the defense. Zottermine gains possession of the ball. John Carroll been able to really get something going. That'll be a high boot. You look at what both teams can do, especially the 4-4-3. Four, 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 Gives you plenty of opportunities on the attacking front and a deep Midfield, but with a 4 4 4 3, leave some gaps a lot of the times on the wings. They'll look to both exploit that. Armine has possession of it down the left field line and just loses it very quickly. Now, John Carroll back on the strike, going pretty quickly. We'll figure out where they want to go with it. And it looks like a possible shot opportunity here, and it will be, but saved by Casey Thompson as he dives to his left between the poles and gets it. That'll be the first shot on goal for John Carroll. John Carroll slowly climbing back into it. Otterbein got off to a quick start with four shots, one on goal. Now John Carroll has been... The one dominating since then has already three shots and one on goal now. Both teams evenly matched so far early in this one. Just goes off, barely stays inbound, and a little bit of miscommunication on that one. Two Otterbein players both run into it. Both teams not giving an inch so far. You just look at this Otterbein team and Jason Griffiths over his seven seasons being here. Holds a career record of 70, 28, and 8. As that was coming into this season. Definitely added more to that. You know, Griffiths 35. That's how old he is. Emerged from a very deep pool of possible coaches. 
and he immediately came in and changed the culture, but also resurrected a program that had thought to be kind of lackluster. He got it. Otter, he guided Otterbein to a 19-3 record, including a 17-match win streak to go undefeated in the OAC to claim both the regular season and tournament titles. When he came in, it was the first OAC trophy since 2003, and Underbine has been very pleased with what he has done, kept him around for seven seasons. And the last time Otterbein really had a lot of success, you look back at 2021, Otterbein was a 15-2-4 team, and a 7-0-2 mark in conference play. You know, this was, despite being picked as to finish sixth in the conference, maybe just sneaking into the OAC tournament. And the Cardinals soared up to number six in the national rankings and shared the OAC regular season title with John Carroll, who they're facing tonight. But this time, they, they won it outright for the first time since 2017. Both teams have a long history of winning. And it's John Carroll. You look at what they have been able to do over the past many seasons in the OAC. They are five-time defending OAC champs. So both these teams have had their fair share of opportunities since Griffiths has came in. These have really been the top, you know, two, three teams in in the OAC, you look at ONU, John Carroll and Otterbein have really been the most dominant forces on the men's side of soccer. And you look at ONU and Otterbein again on the women's side, but then add in Capital. Well, now John Carroll's women's team storing onto the scene and they have an opportunity to now make it to the finals tonight as well. Same with the men's team. Just want to try to figure out where you want to put the ball. Both teams jostling for position of it. John Carroll just getting it away. That's exactly what they want to do. And just going down the middle of the field, an Otterbein defender kept his body in front of the John Carroll player, but it's not going to matter. We're going to see a possible shot opportunity. Decided not to do it. Looked for a little bit of a high pass. Is Otterbein able to keep possession? And looking at Dijon Amladovic, he enters his third season at John Carroll but he enters his 18th season as a part of the program. And he's had a lot of distinguished accomplishments. He's had nine NCAA tournament appearances and nine OAC tournament championships while on staff and combine that with being a head coach as well. And during his second season as a head coach, the Blue Streaks captured the 2022 OAC tournament championship, and that was the program's fifth straight now, if they win, to, win tonight and then go on and win on Saturday, he'll make it his sixth straight for the program. Punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. He's kind of been there ever since, and these are both historic programs, especially over the past decade or so, that have a lot of winning to their names. And this is a gigantic battle for both teams. As either team doesn't want to give an inch. And if you win tonight, you're going to feel very confident from both sides. You're going to think, well, we beat, well, you know, probably the best team in the OAC. And then we get to kind of regroup. You get that momentum. And then you go into Saturday and face whoever comes out between Mountain Union and Ohio Northern. And Ohio Northern, not really getting much of the talk this season. No, they're number two in the OAC Tournament rankings, John Carroll started in the top five nationally. And then you look at what Otterbein did, didn't lose a single game in the conference. ONU quietly has had one of the better seasons in the OAC. Just kind of fallen under the radar because of what both teams have been able to accomplish this season. And that will be a foul. As the referee... 
will stop the game of play. Someone going to tie their shoes as that will be a foul awarded and given to Otterby. Both teams now tied a piece at one. And a free kick opportunity. You could go for the shot here or maybe try to whip it in, have guys run towards the box. A couple of opportunities. You can see the players kind of talking it out. And they're going to go for it, and that will be headed. Otterbein will get it, looking to get it away now. Be a one-on-one -on -one scrum for it. Not able to. That will go off an Otterbein player, and now we're going to get a corner. Be the third corner on the night for John Carroll. Not been able to convert them yet. We have another opportunity to do that here. Right at the corner position, take a couple steps back. Now under 21 minutes to go, and that one will be kicked. And that will be gloved and away, and that will be kicked by Otterbein. And a great stop by Casey Thompson. Just gets his left hand up and swats it away, almost like a block in basketball. And controlling the ball is Brendan Swan. That will be a shot, and a great save and block to get it away is Casey Thompson. A screamer rifled right at him. Just knocks it away, able to get to it and glove it up. A beautiful stop by the goalkeeper. That'll make it two saves for him. John Carroll just keeping possession, kicked away. Daniel Kalick. Going up the middle of the field is Otterbein. Get a good header on it. Go down the right side. And holding on to that one is the midfielder of Colin Oneacre. Just looking around, trying to find any space. And that's really going to be the main focus now with under 20 minutes to go, is just play patient. If you can just wait and wait for your opponent to make a mistake and then take advantage of it, that's what both teams are going to want to do. And that's how Otterby won this first game. As they played on October 18th, won in the 82nd minute by a goal from Carter Ely. And that's what Otterby will look to do again. Could see this possibly going to overtime. and Extra 15 minutes added on to that. See what would happen after that. Both teams don't want to come to that, though. Both want to win outright in the 90 minutes allotted to them. That will be off the head, but it will give possession to Otterbein. Now they'll get the free kick opportunity. Pretty far back, though. Not really an opportunity to take the shot unless they really want to go for it. Just see what to do. Having to add the left hash mark. And that one will be in, and that will be headed by John Carroll into the box. John Carroll just hold possession. Now Otterbein is going to look to get back to it. They will. And that will go all the way back to Casey Thompson. Thompson will get it away. Now Otterbein will go down the left line just trying to hold on to his multiple. John Carroll players will go to it. And gets it all the way to the outside. Share the wealth. And play very patiently. And Otterbein, they're going to say he tripped them. And that's going to go against Otterbein. 
That will be possession. John Carroll, who was an easy call to make for the ref. John Carroll now will get it off. You can, trying to figure out what Iron is going to do. Trying to go through three defenders. Will Isaac coming up the middle of the field. So looking to get rid of it. Just can't find anything what to do. And almost took a one-on-three opportunity. Just not able to. But we'll have the ball again. They're going to go inside looking at the box. That will be in possession of Otterbein. Now back to John Carroll. And a couple opportunities. We're going to go for the shot. And the field goal is good, but did not get to into the goal, into the net. As Otterbein will now have to regroup. A couple substitutions will now come on. Substitutions for Otterbein. And the match, number 14, Luke Futsier. Number 24, Kasdan Hale. Number 25, Patrick Harris. They'll make a couple of adjustments. Really into the home stretch of this first half. And the goal kick. Is Brendan Mower will have it or given to one of his players right at the 45 yard line. Otterbein just playing great defense. Multiple guys back. Substitution for John Carroll entering the match. Number 19, Patrick Kenning. Patrick Kenning will now substitute in for John Carroll. See a huge throw in on the far sideline. Looking for any space to try to find what to do with it. I'll go right back to the goalkeeper, Brandon Mower, sophomore. He's kind of bouncing around, hold it in his hands, get all of his players back far enough. Now he'll kind of take it out of the box, kind of force an opposition to come up. Now John Carroll on the offensive, looking for some room. And that will be a shot. And very lucky on that one is Casey Thompson and the Otterbein Cardinals. That goes a wide a left, but a scorcher on the kick. John Carroll entering the match, number seven, Logan Penn. Logan Penn, number seven, will now enter the match. And a huge sigh of relief. The Cardinals lucky to get out of that one. Just had a shot that curved well to the left. Looked very close, though, as John Carroll and Otterbein are leveled at five shots apiece. And Otterbein just trying to push down the field, going three on one. That will be crabbed by the goalkeeper. As Brendan Mower will make a diving attempt. Now he'll launch the kick, looking to get some offensive. That will be headed away. Otterbein. We're going to see the whistle blown. Passing around, Casey Thompson comes out of the box. Going to try to force someone to come up, which they do. It'll be headed quite well by Otterbein. Just can't find the room to work right now, but they'll get it all the way to the far side. A little stutter step kind of makes Mark 
Wishmeyer kind of hesitate a little bit, the midfielder. Now Mower has the ball again. Just a lot of back and forth between the two goalies of Thompson and Mower. Mower just continuing to hold on to it, letting the ball roll. Now we'll kick it and let the clock run a lot too on that. Now we'll be out. Now we'll be given to the Cardinals on the throw in. So we're gonna figure out where to go with it as John Carroll will boot it away and a header that goes downward right into the turf as John Carroll trying to breathe some life into this offense. Both teams been playing pretty quiet so far. That'll be kicked back as the Cardinals just playing calmly. Both teams just trying to figure out what to do with the ball. And getting it to the kick and that will be a great first touch. John Carroll will have the possession. As they'll look down the left side, but that'll be headed going back to Casey Thompson. And now an impossible shot opportunity and off to the left. A good pass back by John Carroll. It's not a good shot as that will go to the left. Didn't curve at all. Casey Thompson watches it sail by. Casey Thompson has his team push forward more towards midfield. Well, wait a second, now go for the kick. Substitution for John Carroll entering the match from Racing, Nathan John Carroll will make a substitution. His number 18, Dominic Astronica. And the throw-in opportunity just goes right back to John Carroll. Sounder by player just slips and falls as both teams just trying to figure out what they need to do to get any momentum. Both teams have a couple shots. John Carroll six, Otterbein five. Two of those shots have been on target for John Carroll. Both times saved and saved for the one on goal by Mower. Both teams looking for any gaps. Trying to figure out what they want to do. We'll cut it back. Well, Isaac will go to the far end. And now he'll get the ball. Opportunity to just kind of make something happen here. Really spread the defense then, make a move. That's what both teams are doing, wanting them to go wider. As they will back all the way up as Casey Thompson now will have the ball. He's going to get rid of it very quickly. And that's going to be a foul called. Just running into the Otterbein player. Otterbein just spreading it around with under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Trying to figure out where they want to go with it. Now will go right to the John Carroll player. One of the blue streaks will have it. Go down the left line. And both teams just continuing to just play it cautiously, play it safe. Now that we're under 10 minutes, both teams not looking for the mistake. Now 
Casey Thompson will step back and fire it. As Hotterbein and John Carroll fight for a possession, will end up going back to an Hotterbein defender. Both teams keeping it tight to their chest. As John Carroll trying to figure out where to go with the ball is being swarmed as both Otterbein player and John Carroll player fall to the ground as they get back up. The action's still going on as that will go right down the right side. That will be brought in by Daniel Kalick. Still go to the far end. As that will be, as the ref comes over, is going to be a foul of some sort. As the referee walks alongside the honor by player, just kind of giving him a stern talk. Not very happy about his actions. And Casey Thompson, I'm going to find any crease to put the ball for one of his players. John Carroll looking to work it here quickly. Under five minutes to go in the first half. Both teams just playing slow, just keeping the defense tight. That will go down the left side. It'll be a throw in now. Throwing opportunity for John Carroll. John Carroll and Otterbein just fighting for possession. That's been really the start of this game. You're now just joining us with under four minutes to go. It's been a lot of defense for both teams. John Carroll's had a couple opportunities. They have six shots with two on goal. Otterbein five shots with one on goal. John Carroll had three corners, but just nothing so far. Been a lot of back and forth. Otterbein with two fouls. John Carroll with four. And each team just kind of trying to find their way right now. Both teams have very good back lines. Otterbein has given up on a goal to a team since October 11th. And that's really what's been the huge part. Casey Thompson has stopped very two good shot on goal attempts for the Cardinals. Really kept them alive so far late in this first half as both teams are scoreless, 0-0. Old teams just not giving an inch, playing those high press, just looking for any momentum. Either team just trying to figure out what they need to do as Coleman will pass it back to Kalick. So he'll go all the way across. And back to Kalick. Just trying to figure out what they want to do with the ball, trying to spread Otterbein thin, make them tire out. As the lights are now shining very brightly on Memorial Stadium. The wind has calmed as the women's played before this. And now this is going to be a really good opportunity as that will go over the net. The John Carroll player slides into Casey Thompson looking for the ball to try to put it in the back of the net. And just couldn't find it. Ball kind of took a hop, got on his foot, and then went way up in a quick hop. Now that will be one of the best opportunities they had towards the end of this one. Both teams just fighting to figure out what they want to do, play calmly. But Otterbein and John Carroll both 
powerhouses in the OAC as of recently. Them and Ohio Northern have been some of the top teams as of late in the past couple seasons. John Carroll has won five consecutive OAC tournament champs. They're trying to make it six in a row if they could win tonight and then win against the winner of ONU and Mount Union. And if you missed the last stream, the women's team for the Cardinals were downed by Ohio Northern, the Polar Bears. They lost 2-0 in the semifinals. Back-to-back -back years that the Polar Bears defeat the Cardinals in the semifinals, but also back-to-back -back years they make it one to the finals. Eight, and a foul given. This will be a free kick. A great opportunity under a minute to go, 54 seconds. And this is probably where you're going to go for the shot, right about the 20-yard line. Really going to talk this one over and see what Jason Griffiths has had his guys practice. What they want to do here can go for the shot and have the guys run into the box. Maybe try to do that as well. Maybe just a little pass. Under 25 seconds to go. This might be the best opportunity before the game ends for either team. And they're going to go for the shot. That's going to be well high of the crossbar. That will most likely end the half as we get 10 seconds remaining. As that will do it. As we will now go to halftime as the Autobahn Cardinals and John Carroll Blue Streaks are tied 0-0. Both teams have had over five shots. Will Isaac has taken four for Otterbein, but just haven't been able to get it done. As we will be right back on Otterbein TV after the break. The theater, the theater, what's happened to the theater? So said Danny Kay in White Christmas. Thankfully, here at Otterbein, it is well taken care of. Cowan Hall. It actually didn't start as a theater, per se. Cowan Hall was designed to be an auditorium. It was designed to be a chapel and, and then to be a theater. The building came about thanks to the generosity of Clyde Cowan, who was a Pennsylvania industrialist. Interestingly enough, he didn't want his name to be associated with a project at first. Um, when you read between the lines, it would seem that uh, he wished to remain anonymous, but that he still wanted to do something to honor the faculty who had meant so much to him when he was here at Otterbein. Unfortunately, Mr. Cowan passed away shortly before the ink was dry on all the agreements. So at that point, the university went to his widow and asked if they could now name the hall in his honor, which is what they did. Cowan Hall opened in 1951. Over the years, it has been, of course, home to the theater. The radio station was down in the basement for many years. And we are fortunate that not long after the building was opened, we had the arrival of Dr. Charles Dodrell and Professor Fred Thayer, who really brought the theater program into the national limelight for the quality of production, our guest artist program, the summer theater series, and a lot of other innovations that allowed us to become a world-class theater program. Chapel was held here daily for many years, and there are many great stories about pranks in chapel. One of my favorites involves a series of alarm clocks hidden throughout the auditorium they were set to go off at five minute increments. And so it didn't take long before everyone figured this out, but what took a while was to figure out they were all set to go off at five minute increments. And so you had this giant pile of alarm clocks that people were trying to disarm as quickly as possible. 
Another time, a particularly dry speaker, shall we say, was giving a talk on the stage. And someone, it shall be, well, we won't name names, though I think we do know uh, it was a particular fraternity who was involved in this. They set up corn in the fly space. And so at an appropriate moment, corn started to trickle down on this gentleman slowly at first until finally a great deluge dumped on him. Unable to speak, he sputtered a bit, left the stage, and that was the end of chapel for the day. For many years, uh, the commencement ceremony was held in Cowan Hall. Of course, that outgrew this space far too quickly. In 1909, this was the site of Lambert Hall, our first music and arts building. Music has been a part of Otterbein's history since the very beginning, and artwork came soon after. For a time, there was music taught in the home of Lewis Davis, which was a brick house that stood across the street from here where Clippinger Hall stands today. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the music and arts program had grown to such a point that they really needed their own space. Enter George A. Lambert. He was an industrialist whose brother John built what is believed to be the first gas-powered American automobile. The two of them produced a car called the Lambert between 1905 and 1915. George's wife, Ava, and three of their children were Otterbein grads. It was in Ava's memory that George gave Otterbein $30,000 to build the Lambert Memorial Hall. The first three floors were taken up by the music department, and the top floor was taken up by the art department. Now, the art department's floor was interesting in that it had no rooms. It had a series of panels that could be slid into different configurations to create Classroom space, gallery space. I am told that despite the fact that this was completely wooden interior, the kiln for the ceramics was all on the third floor. Oddly enough, this is one of the few Otterbein buildings no longer here that did not burn down. As far as the music department goes, the building was constructed with the best soundproofing technology available at the time, hollow bricks. They thought this would prevent sound from leaking. Instead, what it managed to do was create channels through which sound traveled. And so I have been told by alumni that you could be in the basement practicing and you could hear conversations two floors above you. Lambert Hall served as the home of music and arts well into the 1970s, at which point it was obvious that the structure was not adequate for the modern needs. So it was decided to repurpose the old alumni gymnasium into what would become the Battelle Fine Arts Center. The Battelle Fine Arts Center, today of course the center of music on campus, but it began its life in 1929 as the Alumni Gymnasium. The association building, which had been the university gymnasium for many years, was really too small and not adequate for the task of a modern physical education curriculum. So, the alumni took it upon themselves. Again, the school had no say in this. The alumni said, we want a gym. And so they began among themselves, raising the funds and leading the drive to create a brand new modern facility. This all came to pass in 1929 with the opening of the obviously named Alumni Gymnasium. As a side note for you trivia buffs, Frank Clements, who was then chairman of the board of trustees, took such a strong leading role in raising the funds and making this a reality that at one point the alumni said, let's name it the Clements Gymnasium. Clements was far too modest to allow this to happen. He insisted that the credit go to all of the alumni. Not quite a hundred years later then, he would get his due in the Clements Center, but that's another story. The gymnasium featured an indoor raised track, a full gymnasium, it contained a weight room, and it was a marvel of uh, modern technology for 1929. Luckily, it was completed before the stock market crash of November of that year. It served the university quite well until 1975, when the Reich Center was built, and that allowed both the women's and the men's athletics programs to come back together under one roof. The building remained unused for a few years, at which point a program called the Decision for the Arts was started here at Otterbein. Lambert Hall was no longer adequate for music and arts, a new facility was needed, and rather than tear down this beautiful existing structure, it was decided that it would be reconfigured. 
Thanks to the Battelle Memorial Institute of Columbus, Ohio, we were able to get enough funding to turn this into a proper music and arts building. Since then, it has remained the home of music. Arts moved across the Alum Creek a couple of years ago into the new center, and dance has its home here. Just a few summers ago, when they were doing renovation, they opened up and revealed a part of the past of this building that I'm pleased to say is still in place. If you go around to the four corners of the building, you will see the various plaques that once adorned the gymnasium. They are virility, health, symmetry, sports. Inside the Patel Fine Arts Center, you will find Riley Auditorium, one of our premier performance spaces. You'll also find the Gary Tyree Band Room, which was named in honor of my great friend, mentor, and tuba teacher, Gary R. Tyree, who was the band director here for many years. We were fortunate enough several summers ago to be given a gift in order to open up all of the windows. So that now more than ever, the building contains its classic gymnasium look, but is still very much a modern music center for the university. Otterbein has made me who I am because it's helped me to really find myself. Otterbein has given me lots of opportunities to kind of flourish. The Otterbein experience worth it for me is how personalized the classes are and everything and how much of a connection I have with all my professors. Knowing your community and like being involved with the community makes a big difference in how you experience life. I'm really grateful that I got to meet all the amazing faculty and staff here and those who took a chance on me. It made me feel very comfortable. I was able to do things I would typically not do. You get to know your professors, and I think that's something that I love the most. Otterbein has definitely made me a lot more confident in myself. The greatest things about Otterbein is it really gives you that chance to stand out and make a difference. I transferred to Otterbein my junior year. The first week was first flight. I met a few friends who were also transfer students and we did the Snyder Donut Run. I had no idea what it was, but I remember like being like, okay, I want a donut, so I'm doing it. I think my favorite things that I'll take away from college are like being on the team, obviously being on the equestrian team was a huge part of it. I did a bunch of things that like got me involved, so I'm proud of myself in that because I wasn't very involved in high school. It was such a big accomplishment for me to be just recognized on the homecoming court. The reason why I applied was not only for myself, but I also wanted to represent people of color in the court as well. I would like to thank my dear, dear work mom, Kelly Miller. She is someone who has been very supportive and there for me since day one. Melissa Gilbert, she has been there every step of the way and helped me through being a Cardinal Corps leader to just like daily things. Dr. Sin has been supportive to me since my freshman year. I would have to thank Meredith Meyer, Dr. Meyer, my psychology advisor. I um, adore her. She is one of my favorite professors I've ever had. And I really think she's helped me find my path here at Otterbein, but also beyond Otterbein. My parents. My parents have been there for me every step of the way. Not even my parents, but my family in general. Whoever donated this gorgeous, gorgeous animal, I love him dearly. All the horses that we have here that are owned by Otterbein have been donated and we can't do this without generosity. I want to say to all the donors that have supported me, 
Thank you so much. I was very um, fortunate to receive the Opportunity Scholarship. I am now able to pursue my, my dream of becoming a college counselor in the future. I would say to a donor, thank you for donating to our campus and giving us many opportunities that we've had. And I don't believe I would be where I am today without um, the donations from donors. Thank you for all the donors and like all of what their support also means. And it gives us a lot of opportunities. You belong here. Trust me, there's a place for you here at Otterbaugh University. I was scared to transfer, but it really was one of the best decisions I've made in my college career. From coming from a small town, I think coming to Westerville has given me uh, the chance to meet people from different backgrounds, which has helped me find new ways of thinking and new ways of understanding the world around me. I just love how close-knit we are, the community here. It feels like there's this own campus vibe like right when you get on Otterbaugh, and I definitely felt it after I toured here the first time. I'm definitely gonna miss my experience here at Otterbein and I'm truly grateful for the people that I've met because they'll be in my life forever, so I'm, I'm truly grateful for it. It's probably gonna be like the best four years and it really is a shame that it's ending so soon. During COVID, we lost two years, so I think that it ends us. Welcome back into Memorial Stadium as the John Carroll Blue Streaks and the Otterbein Cardinals are tied at 0-0 apiece heading into the second half. Hello everybody, Micah Flack along with you heading into the second half and that first half was really just a game of attrition for both teams. Just kind of really played defensively, got some attacking opportunities as well, but both teams aggressive on the ball on offense and defense. John Carroll and Otterbein right about the same shot number. John Carroll 7, Otterbein at 6. Two of those of are on goal for John Carroll and one on goal for Otterbein. As John Carroll committed a lot of fouls, six to be exact. Only three corners going to John Carroll. Otterbein at none. And this is a second half that one team is trying to come up big. And this defense for Otterbein, continue to mention it, just one of the, the best defenses in the OAC, but also just in the con in the country in Division Three. This is an Otterbein team that hasn't allowed a goal to a team since October 11th. Casey Thompson is back-to-back -back defense player of the week to end the regular season. He had 12 saves and a pair of shutouts to end the season. And he leads the conference in save percentage and a scoreless streak of 428 minutes while out on the pitch. This is a John Carroll team that's going to have to look how to figure it out. But this is another back line for John Carroll that's just as good. Have an All-American back there who last year, defender Isaac Coleman who was a third team All-American last fall and he has a lot of experience for the Blue Streak, 70 matches of experience on the GC or JCU defense. It's just gonna be a game of who can strike first and getting the most shots for Otterbein, none of them on goal, but Will Isaac got four of six shots for the Cardinals and what a player he is, Will Isaac. 
ranks second in the OAC with 27 points this year and has 111 in his illustrious career. What a career it has been as it starts to ravel down. Still some opportunities to go to the NCAAs and an opportunity to win an OAC tournament. The fifth-year guy. He'll look to figure out what he needs to do to put his team in an opportunity to win. And that's exactly what he'll do from Grove City. His brother, Nick Isaac, out for the game. Usually one of the star midfielders. He has six goals and six assists, but he is out for at least this game due to injury. So he has been replaced for the moment. And both of them just have chemistry. Got to talk to them a couple weeks ago, and the chemistry they share just know how each other play. And especially Jason Griffiths knows how they play as he was the head coach on their club team for many seasons and kind of knows what he gets from both. Nick Isaac originally, though, never came to play with his brother, played with him for two years back in high school. But then Nick Isaac went to Ohio State right down the road, only about 20 minutes from Westerville, went to Ohio State, was on the staff there, or on the team there with head coach Greg Mazinoff. And he decided to transfer out of Brian Mazinoff's program and decided to come to Otterbein and kind of knew Jason Griffiths had that connection from previous years as the club head coach, knew exactly what he wanted, knew what he wanted to be a starting caliber player. And he's been getting a lot of those minutes, a lot of starting role opportunities for the Cardinals and gets to play one year, final year for Will Isaac and just Played all the way in club together back in middle school, junior high, and high school. Now get to play in college together. A couple of siblings on the outer body. Look at the, the women's team. Bailey and Aubrey Zanella play together as well. Just a lot of families for the Cardinals. Now we'll look at Brandon Mower, and he's played very well so far. He's been able to get a one save in this game, and it's all you really need is trying to figure out how to stop this team. As Mower, a very, very good player on the season for this John Carroll team. He has 50 saves, a save percentage of 78%. Has a goals against average of .99, so just giving up about one goal a season, only given up, or a game, only given up 14 goals so far this season. So a very good player as well. And in 2022, when he was a, a freshman, played in four games, only gave, gave up a goal per game, and now took over the starting role this season, has played in all 15 games. And what a season for both teams as they look to try to get something going. If they tie here, you're not going to get a tie. The breaker, you're going to go to overtime. And then if overtime doesn't work, you're going to see a penalty shootout. Both teams get five opportunities against the opposing goalkeeper. Whoever comes out top of that will end up moving forward. Now an opportunity for the throw-in by the Cardinals as they chase field position after halftime. As they'll look to try to get back on the board or I guess some shots create something here. The throw-in just not able to do it. As John Carroll has possession of the ball. So we'll kind of spread it around, 
Trying to figure out how to break past this Otterbein defense. Both teams weren't able to do it in the first half. Both will look to try to figure out how they can do that, though. Otterbein was able to do it back on October 18th after defeating John Carroll 1-0. to zero, Get a score in the 82nd minute from Carter Ely. And that's how they ended up defeating John Carroll. That's how they ended up outright winning the conference. At that time, John Carroll sat atop the standings in the OAC, but after that loss, that put them behind Otterbein, and then they eventually fell behind Ohio Northern, who sits at number two in the seating in the rankings. And John Carroll gets past Capital in the first round. That's how they ended up coming here. They hosted Capital, won that match two to one. And then on the other side of the bracket, Ohio Northern and Otterbein got the bye. Mount Union won in the first round. And ended up beating Marietta two to one. And now Mount Union is playing Ohio Northern and with an opportunity to play in the winner of this game. Both teams currently playing right now. There'll be a whistle blown. And currently in the second half, 37 minutes to go. Mount Union and Ohio Northern are tied 0-0. We'll keep you updated on that. Depending on what happens here, will greatly impact that game. And this, this game will impact that game as well as Mount Union came in with a very good record at 16-2-1, 6-2-1 in the conference, but Ohio Northern 11-5-2, 7-1-1 one in the conference. Both very good teams. Still both Look to win that game and then watch closely to see who wins between John Carroll and Otterby. Both teams looking to try to get an inch on each other. Neither team would want to go to overtime if that was the case. As Otterbein gets a great through balls, they'll push all the way up the field. Have an opportunity down the left line. They're going to go for it, whip it in. That's going to be right ahead header. And just not able to get to it. The Otterbein player falls in disbelief. Could have gotten ahead on it. That would have been a perfect opportunity. And shaking their heads, that was a beautiful cross. An opportunity for the Cardinals to take the lead. Now Brendan Mower will go for the kick. Both teams looking to try to figure out what they want to do here. Just break away. As both teams are going to have to be a little bit patient on that first half. Both wanted to just get it going and try to find anything offensively. Maybe be a little bit patient, swing the ball around, try to force the opening. And that'll be out. A clumsy mistake. As Mitchell Patterson... Had the ball, then passed it back. That'll be headed again, and then off the foot of John Carroll player. Casey Thompson gets the ball away just in time. Cardinals will bring up the ball, two on one situation. Now a throw in by Otterbein. That will be a 
Pass right back up in the middle. Go back to John Carroll, just fighting for the ball. An honor by player falling. And they're asking for a card. Is C number 12, Andrew Rudisil. Just kind of was talking to the referee there, trying to vouch for his teammate. Just could not get the referee to budge on anything. And Hayden Vu will bring the ball and set it down as Will Isaac will be underneath it. Hayden Vu far behind the 50-yard line. Will Isaac will take a couple steps back. So he'll go and whip that one inside. A header, both go up for it. Coming down with it is John Carroll. They got it, but now Otterbein has it back. Now will be kicked inbounds, it says, as Otterbein's defense is trying to get underneath it. Just fighting for the ball as John Carroll going to keep it away. And they will. Now we kept in bounds. They'll roll down the right field line and just kind of falling and tripping. Both teams looking to get possession of it. As Otterbein still has it, that will go off a John Carroll defender. Trying to figure out where to go with it. We'll go back. To Jaden, go back to Mark, Mark Wishmeyer, excuse me. And that'll be given to Otterby as now they'll move up and have an opportunity for a beautiful throw in. Looking to get back as a lot of players are up as the defender. Now will be headed, touched by an honor by player, and now will be out. As Hayden Vu trying to direct traffic the midfielders, he was the only one back in case something happened. John Carroll now have possession and will kick it all the way back. I'll be out to Mitchell Patterson. He'll have it at the 20 and go to the far outside. He's trying to figure out where to place it. As Will Isaac gets his cleat on it and kicks it away. John Carroll moving it around is number 10 and Nicholas Greca will pass it down the left side. As Sean Carroll will get the throw in. In space, two Ottermine defenders closed down. Going to go all the way to the outside. That'll be Michael Kelly who had the ball. And then we'll pass it to the middle. And giving it the boot, it's number five, Nicholas Morgario. And going for it, and John Carroll will have it. And will go for the shot, will be back out to Kelly. Kelly will pass it down the right side. Kind of playing around with it. And Kelly goes for the hesitation, looking to try to set it up. Could not find anything on it. As Vu is underneath the ball, 
will sprint back to try to make the defensive play, but he runs into and maybe a little bit of tackle. And now we're going to see some shoving and pushing going on. Now the referee will get involved. Just a common foul. No cards are given out. It's a little bit of a warning. As Will Isaac will kind of point around, try to man his guys. Came over to help Vu. And now we'll stand at the 30-yard line. Vu trying to plead his case with the referees, kind of shrugs it off. Now will go back to work. And in for the cross, not able to get there. As Brendan Swan of John Carroll tried to whip it in. As Casey Thompson gets his hands on it. As Casey Thompson, luckily to get rid of that ball, almost got drilled. Been able to keep it away. John Carroll playing fast as Kelly has the ball again. Playing a lot in the wide areas. He'll pass it back to his teammate, number 19, Patrick Koenig. Go all the way back around. Be over to the wide side. Kelly will have it again. He'll look in the wide areas for his teammate. That will go inside the box, but hit it out. As Andrew Rudsell trying to make a play on the ball. Just not able to. Looked for the header for Otterbein. Now he'll run up the field along with Will Isaac in the midfield. Casey Thompson will push everyone up for this kick. And going for the throw. John Carroll calling out a lot of things currently. As Kelly was the one on the throw, the whistle blows. And kicking it in was number 11 for Ottermine, Mark Wishmeyer, as Vu will pass it back to Thompson. Looking at Wishmeyer and Vu, trying to figure out where to go to it is. Thompson will go to Wishmeyer. Now Thompson just going to boot it away. Go right back up the middle, down the right side. Trying to figure out what to do with it. Kind of a three-on-one scenario. It's kind of battling back for the ball, trying to do anything, and a little bit of a push maybe. As the Otterbein bench is not very happy about that one. I'll be in possession for Otterbein on the throw. And the free kick opportunity. Have it well to the right of the 30-yard line. Vu back deep. Kind of really playing that defensive midfielder role. And Casey Thompson well up as well, start standing at the 30-yard line currently. And will be whipped in off the head. And that will be past the goal post. And a good opportunity. If could have gotten the right part of the ball on the head. Just need to go down with it. Went more up. And that will give Brendan Mower time to recoup and settle down with the ball. And substituting in forward, sophomore Patrick Ahrens wearing the number 25 for Otterbein will come into the game. Also substitution for John Carroll entering the match, number 21, Hayden Hefner. And Hayden Hefner, starting midfielder, will come back into the game for the second half. Otterbein just trying to get the ball away out of their side of the field. 
And both teams been quiet so far. Both had a couple opportunities. Otterbein whipped it in on the header, just went above the goal post. Yeah. And John Carroll, a couple looks as well, but some good saves by Otterbein and Casey Thompson. And also both teams starting to shoot a lot more. John Carroll has eight shots, Otterbein seven. Both teams shot a lot in the first as well as that ball will be hit away. Otterbein clumped together, really have four in the back, three in the front, just trying to cover up every opportunity that John Carroll might have. As the whistle blows, as Casey Thompson will run over and pick up the ball. Under 30 minutes to go, 15 minutes, about 17 already played. Both teams not giving an inch so far. It's going to be that little opportunity once they find the crease. Someone's going to make a go for it. And that'll be a three, one-on-two two opportunity. The shot, and that will be wide left. Looking for the opportunity was Will Isaac. That'll be his fifth shot on the night. Just kind of a little frustrated that with that one kind of... Leans his head back. Thought he had something there on the two-on-one situation. Got in front. Didn't get the right spot on the ball, and it went wide left. And Will Isaac, one of the captains on this team, one of the leaders, has been done a lot for them, has five of their eight shots in this one. So that'll be off the edge of Kelly and being tripped up. His number seven is the John Carroll fans not happy about that one. Logan Penn, I'm not going to say it was intentional or anything like that. Picking up the ball is Brendan Swan as he'll look to go for the free kick. That he will. He'll go deep into that one off the head of a Cardinal. It's really just about finding your offensive rhythm. We know what they can do, and you're going to get a two-on-two -two situation here for Otterbein. And just loses the ball very quick on that one. Had the opportunity. You can see the hands just not very happy. Now the throw-in will be number 13, Mitchell Patterson. Will throw the gloves off is Andrew Rudsill. He was the midfielder, had an opportunity on the one-on-one -on -one and was not happy about it at all. Kind of ripped his gloves off and threw them to the side, said, I'm not doing that anymore. So he took those off, and now he's going to run up the left side. We're going to have an opportunity here for Rudsill, and he'll lose the ball, but it will go back to Will Isaac. He'll go for the shot off the, again, Will Isaac off of him. But he goes for it, and that's what you want to do for Malir. Just take the shots. Rootsill and Will Isaac had a couple opportunities so far. Rootsill, the midfielder, and Isaac, one of the leading go-getters in points and goals for this Otterbein team. Now the throw in for John Carroll. Be out wide. We're gonna try to make anything out of it. In the midfield, Casey Thompson will come up just booted away, not allowing any opportunity on it. And now that will be tripped up. Roots will have the ball, but an opportunity here is down and out. I see a couple players come over. You can hear the fans are cheering about that one. We give them a great opportunity now, the Cardinals. See what they can do here. 
as a Michael Kelly, number 12 for John Carroll, will, will get the yellow card the first of the night. And now Will Isaac in a prime position here at right about the seven yard line. Try to whip this one in. This is where legends are made. 23 minutes to go. He's going to whip it in. That's going to be the, on the far side, up in the air. And that will be out. And Will Isaac just raises his hands, not happy at all. You can hear the fans cheering. And a great opportunity now is we're going to see a corner come out. It was off. They're going to say off the head of a John Carroll player in general. Now another opportunity for them. Multiple opportunities for both teams. Now Otterby will get their first corner of the night. And will it be a good one? Is the question. And in it goes. On the far side. And that'll be just out. As Otterbein players are very happy about that one. As that will go out on John Carroll. Will Isaac will now go to the far left corner. They're going to get another opportunity here. And John Carroll just not happy. The defense been on their heels. Two corners and a free kick. Both all the times just inches away from getting the goal. Now Will Isaac will set up and look to fire it in. And we go back to the far side, see what he does here. And that's in, that's off the head. Off the head of an Otterbein player and just barely didn't get it in, just off the top of the head. If they could have rolled that in, Vu now will play high. Just kind of looked at Will Isaac a little bit confused. They'll get back in formation and an opportunity was missed high right. That was Mark Wishmeyer. And he's had a couple opportunities tonight. The one-on-one -on -one scenario got it picked away from him, ripped off the gloves. Then the header there, not able to get it going. He's otter buying, but they've had the opportunities. The momentum definitely in their favor after those. That one will be grabbed, and that will go up the field. No one there to get it. Vu trying for it, and very quick speed. The, the closing speed he had on Brendan Mower. As Mower just tells his players to get down the field, just kind of pushes them that way. Looking for the header. Just kind of playing a little bit of intimidation factor. Kind of stopped there. Kind of approached a little bit. Backed up the John Carroll player. Will be off. John Carroll will now bring it up the left side. Otterbein had a lot of opportunities. Had two corners and a free kick. Both whipped in. A couple of them headed a little too high. As Mark Wishmeyer had the best opportunity of the night. Just gets it off the top of his head and it goes wide right. It's a little bit of that in front of him. There's an opportunity for Otterbein to put in the first goal. John Carroll now pressing high. Looking for any opportunity here. They'll go for the shot blocked. Still have possession of it. They'll give it up to Kelly, who has the yellow card. And just kicking it away is Brennan Swan. Now just moving it around. Trying to figure out where they want to go with it. Nicholas Gracia. Go all the way to the far side. Yeah. 
Otterbein looking to be quick with the ball. No opportunity. They're going to go for the shot. And that will be wide right. And well, that's very lucky, too, as Casey Thompson slipped. He was going to his right, trying to approach the ball and figure out where it was going and slipped. If that ball would have been going to the left, there's an opportunity. He wasn't going to be able to get there to it. But luckily goes wide right of the post. Now that will be a corner opportunity, whipping it in. Here's Gracia. Or Swan, excuse me, and that will go out. Under 20 minutes to go. Both teams not giving an inch, throwing it in is Hafner. And just off the head of the Otterbein player will get it away. Kelly will have the first touch on it. As Hafner will get it stripped from him. That one will be kicked deep. We're going to run that one down. John Kerr will get there too, and we're going to see a, a foul be called, it looks like. Not very, a little bit confused on what they were thinking there as Otterbein just kind of ran into him, tried to chase it down, but had too much momentum going into it. Now pushing everyone back is the goalkeeper, Renan Mower. And we're going to try to push it up. Kelly will pass it to his teammate, trying to break through the Otterbein defense, and they will not be able to as Casey Thompson will pick it up. That one will be pitched out. And going up for it is number 11, Jaden Wright. So he'll still have possession of the ball, trying to keep it. Will go to one of his teammates. So that one will be looked to hit inbounds, and it will be. Otterbein gets underneath it, two headers in a row. Sean Carroll trying to do, figure out what they want to do. Kelly has the ball. One on one scenario, now two on one. We'll pass it all the way back. Kind of passing it around. Be back to Kelly. As he gets contested down the field. And that will be a foul. Just a little bit contesting. We're going to see some people go off right now. And just the player of Otterbein just kind of doesn't even stop and talk to the ref, but just kind of points and hear him get a little bit loud. The ref doesn't acknowledge him, but not happy at all. And Kelly will have the ball. Now we'll bring it up. That will go into the wide sides and just able to get back to it is Isaac Coleman for John Carroll. One of the top defenders in the country, third team All-American last season. We'll be looking up the middle, John Carroll looking for their best opportunity. We'll go for the shot right in the chest of Casey Thompson. The fans quite happy about that. 
is Wishmeyer. We'll pass it back to Thompson. And looking for anything here. It was Gracia as he'll pass it back and that will go to the far side. We're gonna get by the defense of Otterbein. We'll have the ball looking to try to do anything with it. John Carroll. Moving the ball quite well currently. Just haven't been able to get any looks. As that will be taken as Ohio, excuse me, Otterbein will have the opportunity here is that will be taken by Drew Holman, the midfielder. And now we're going to see some people falling and sliding on each other. And that will be possession to Otterbein. The fans are starting to get routed up. As Vu will be underneath the ball. See a player down on the ground looking possibly cramped up a little bit. Try to do some stretches. And now we'll come off the field is Muriello. Referee just talking, trying to figure out what they're going to do with this one. Will Isaac underneath the ball. That will be booted down the center of the field. John Carroll gets the ball on it first, but... Now Otterbein will have it looking for anything here. They'll go for the cross, be off the John Carroll player. And now we're going to see a corner opportunity. Will Isaac will trot over to the left flag. We'll set the ball down and look to find someone is Rudesill. Plays at the 10-yard line, not in the box. An opportunity to pass to him if they don't see, see something they don't like. Just working on the alignment, just a little bit of confusion. As Will Isaac will go back in for it. And now they'll be headed. Possibly Otterbein will look to try to get back at it. John Carroll has the players. John Carroll the opportunity. But Otterbein makes great work on the defensive side. And will get it away from harm's danger. In harm's way. As Moeller will go right up the middle of the field. Either team looking to score here. Just under 11 and a half minutes to go remaining in the game. We'll see a possible opportunity to go to overtime. As underneath the ball is Kelly. Now he'll pass it. Looking up the middle of the field, just not able to get to it. Kind of see him slap his hands. Was Jaden Wright? Had a great play on the ball. Casey Thompson, though, gets his hands underneath it. And 
As Thompson will hit that one high. As that one will be to Otterby. As you can see, the John Carroll player not very happy. Kind of giving a little bit of a talk. As that was Nicholas Gracia from John Carroll. And we'll set up an opportunity as Will Isaac will be underneath this one again. Vu to his right. As he'll go deep into the center. That will be headed away. Still no one has control of it yet. As the referee will just continue to let that one play. Well, no, they won't actually. We'll stop there. John Carroll now will have the free kick. Under 10 minutes to go now in the game. This end scoreless will go into overtime. That will be headed out, given to John Carroll. So we'll see the whistles blow. As the referee will get involved now. Gavin Morello will now come in to the game for Otterbein. That's where you want to make those late pushes. Now just nine minutes to go in the game. Want to try to do anything here. Don't want to really go to overtime if you don't have to, either team. But definitely a possibility. And we look at what's going on in Ohio in Ada, and that will be kicked out. We looked at what's going on in Ada, Ohio, Northern and Mount Union battling for their spot in the OAC Tournament Finals. Ohio, Northern and Mount Union still deadlocked at zero apiece, four minutes and 36 seconds left to go in that game. Looks like they might be heading to overtime as well. Still plenty of time though for each game, each team all four teams looking to get up and leave. Score a goal and walk away as the clock expires. That will be hit out as the clock continues to run. Going to overtime, see 15 minutes put on the clock. Continuing to throw the ball in. As now we're going to see an opportunity here. As the flag will be raised. Offside is called. Will Isaac had an opportunity on that. As John Carroll will get their hands on the ball. A 
That one will be right in the hands of Casey Thompson. A screamer. Now six minutes to go. I'm going to try to keep this one alive as that will be right back to Muller. Both teams looking to figure out what they need to do to walk away and not go to overtime. Getting back underneath the ball is number seven, Logan Penton. That will be passed all the way back and go all the way to the far side. It's Nathan Monastara. Now be passed out to the wide areas for Otterbein. So that will go down the sideline and will be picked up. So that will be Patterson on it. So he'll give it back to Vu. So they'll work the wide areas. And getting tackled down, and that will be in possession of Otterbein. Have the opportunity now on the free kick. And you want to try to create off these set pieces. That's exactly what they want to do. Raise the hand, and they'll go for the kick. Put it right in the box. Getting back to it is John Carroll. They'll look to play quickly. And just continuing to fight for it and not able to, and that was number 11, Mark Wishmeyer. And Vu will now have it. Look to figure out where he wants to go with it. Wishmeyer right there pointing at where he wants it. And that will go all the way up and fighting for it. And just keeping his body in front is Steven Samuelson as he gives it back to Muller. And Muller will give it down the side. Both teams not giving an inch. Under three and a half minutes to go. And on that one, going for the possible shot or the cross was Jaden Wright. That will go out of bounds. And Wright with a huge throw in in the middle as they'll look for it. John Carroll will get back underneath it. Now they'll pass it back out. Having his foot on it is Samuelson. Now will be passed up the field. Looking for anywhere to go with it. His Wishmeyer will go up the field. Just looking for anywhere to go with the ball is both teams. Both are fighting, pushing, and shoving is going on. The rest going to let it continue. So will go down the left side. As Mower will go all the way down, trying to look for right, and he'll find him as he'll get a one-on-one -on -one situation here, and he'll try to cross it in and not able to get to it. And a beautiful stop by Casey Thompson. I don't know if he got his hand on it or not. And that will be a beautiful stop as Wright looked to go back. One of his teammates who looked for the shot, not able to get it. Now a minute and a half to go. 
And if you're wondering about what happened to the other game, Mountain Union and Ohio Northern will head into overtime after the end of regulation. Both tied 0-0 in that game. Now we'll look to see what will happen here. John Carroll goes for the shots in the hands One of Casey minute. Thompson. A beautiful stop there. Casey Thompson just going to really start to hold on to it. I think Honorbein is looking to go to overtime. So he'll boot that one away. And now Wright will have it again. The one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He's going to cut back. And that could be a could have been a possible shot opportunity. Daniel Kalick was coming all the way up on that. And Wright just so on the ground, unhappy about that one. Looks to maybe be injured or something like that. No, we'll get up now. Oh no, we'll go back to the ground. Just kind of frustrated about that one as that will now put an end to the second half. And we will go into overtime as both teams will now take a quick break, regroup, as both teams looked very good in that half. John Carroll got 16 shots, Otterbein 11, but John Carroll got the most opportunities, five of those shots on goal, as we will get a quick five-minute break as John Carroll and Otterbein are tied at 0-0 here on Otterbein TV. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24 hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1 800 662 HELP. Learn more at SAMHSA.gov slash support. Take out all your jammies. A bad one! Good job. Those go in the very top drawer. Top drawer. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. For all of the things you may one day do. Do play and laugh. Do win and lose. Do learn from your mistakes. And challenge yourself to grow. Do not be afraid or make decisions based in fear. Do it all with confidence and with kindness and strength. Do call your mom and ask her for advice. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing. I love you always, mom. Okay. I know what you're going through. Too much time inside, not enough outside. And like, what's up with the parents? They're in their own world. Hello? You can't do anything right anymore. No encouragement, no anything. If you're waiting for something to change, maybe it's time to stop waiting and change things yourself. So ask your parents how they're doing. Yeah, you go first. 
ask what you can do to help. Parents are people too, and the stresses you're feeling, you can bet they're feeling as well. Best of all, when you help them feel better, it has the same effect on you. Visit yourlifeyourvoice.org for some game-changing ideas on how you can turn things around at your house. When you go first, everybody wins. Every day I felt worse. Life just waited time. I didn't even want to get out of bed. You're feeling overwhelmed all the time. It wasn't just school or home. It was everything. I didn't think anyone understood. Just empty. No enthusiasm for the things I used to love to do. Just when I thought there was no way I would ever feel better, I discovered a friend I didn't know I had anymore. Me. 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 Turns out I had the strength to get myself back. More strength than I knew. I only needed a new way to see things. A new way to see myself. Just needed to take that first step. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium as sudden death two minute overtimes are back here as both teams, or 10 minutes, excuse me, of overtime will have the opportunity for either team to win. And both teams and a lot of good opportunities in the full regulated game. John Carroll got 16 shots, Otterbein 11. Five of those shots on goal for John Carroll, only one for Otterbein. Now both teams and kind of all over the conference are playing in Overtime is Mount Union and Ohio Northern also in 10 minute overtimes. And they'll play an extra 20 minutes possibly. This will be the first overtime 10 minutes. If they play a second one and both times they go to 0-0, both are tied still. They'll go to penalty kicks. No golden boot anymore in the playoffs. They got rid of that. As now Otterbein will be shooting at the right end of the field. They switch back again going into overtime. And a little bit of a trip, and they're going to give it to him. And falling on that one was Colin Wanaker, the midfielder. You could hear him cry out saying, hey. And he'll get the trip. And now Will Isaac, one of the captains, one of the best players on the team, come out, had six shots in your regulation. One of those on a goal. And a lot of free kick and corner opportunities. Here's one of them. That one will be whipped in, and that one will go right, and that will be stopped by the goalkeeper. And what a save by Brendan Moher. And that's one to take another look at. He'll rip that one out of the air, but oh my goodness. Looked like it was just in. We're going to see a trip now. And now the referee and the fans are going to give him a warning. But the fans are not very happy about that one. That's Vu on that. Trying to make a good opportunity on it. And 
everyone not very happy. You can almost hear it a little bit. The, the fans are not very happy about that. As both teams kind of got to figure out what they want to do. The strategies in overtime, only 10 minutes. You got to figure out what you want to do and what needs to be done. Try to win the game. And Ottermeyer will try to defect. And probably the best opportunity for Otterbein. Almost had it. But what a save by John Carroll and the goalkeeper. Over Brandon Mower. And likely could have ended the game possibly, but now we will continue on. Under six minutes to go in the first of two overtimes, if need be. Both teams are going to look to play very aggressive. This is kind of where it's all at. It's in overtime. we got ten minutes in each overtime, might as well give it your best and kind of go for it all. And that's exactly what I think both teams are going to try to do. Just running down the right sideline. And getting underneath it is the Cardinals just trying to boot it away, and that's what they do. Get it out of their side, regroup. John Carroll dominating the possession so far. And under that one is Isaac Coleman. So he'll pass it back. Going it all the way to the far side is Daniel Kalick. That one will be stolen away by Otterbein. They're going to look all the way up the middle. An opportunity here. And what a save by John Carroll. Had someone through, Otterbein did. Able to stop the momentum of the Cardinals. Now we'll back up all the way to the end of the track. Going to look to really launch this one as close as they can get. They're going to actually pass this off maybe. No, they won't. They're going to go all the way in on it, and that will be out. As Mower will put his hands up and let it go. So far in this overtime, it has delivered a lot of back and forth, some jostling for position. As Mower will get that one up. We'll go all the way down the right sideline. Otterbein will have it. Just going to boot it away outside for the throw in. Just kind of regroup. And that's kind of one of those things you do in soccer. You throw it away. You don't throw it away, but you kick it away. You just kind of put it out of harm's reach. Allow yourself to regroup. Sure, you might get the throw in and allow them to kind of readjust as well, but you're also readjusting. And that's what you want to see. Now we're going to see a corner opportunity. This one will be put right at the edge. Looks like Daniel Kalick will be the one going for it. On the kick in, and it is up. And it will be out. But now the kick, the volley, and that will be off to the right. As Casey Thompson gets back up, goes wide right of him. But man, did that have some power on it. Two and a half minutes to go in the first overtime. Casey Thompson taking his time with the ball. Pushing all of his players up. And both of these coaches... Been in the OAC, coach for a very long time. Know what needs to be done in overtime. Have played in tightly contested games like this. They'll know what they need to do. 
Both teams, though, going to look to try to put the dagger. Try to end it all. As the referee will stop that one. It'll be a free kick opportunity. Now the Mount Union, Ohio Northern game, they just finished their first overtime, still tied at 0-0. They're going to go to the second. As Otterbein and John Carroll look well on their way to doing that as well. I'll be outside. I'll be whipped in looking. Along the far side. Just kind of putting it in. Trying to figure out where they want to go with it. I'll be giving back out. Because Irene was the intended target on the pass. Oh. I'll be kicked back. One minute remaining in the first overtime. Going to be a second one. And it'll be a foul called under 50 seconds to go. Walking back out to get the ball was Gavin Mariello. And now Nick Isaac will get underneath the ball. The designated free kick player. Also doing the corners as well. And a lot of that today. He's going to look to boot this one as far as he can. 20 seconds to go. And they're going to stop the clock. The referee is going to walk over. And that's Jaden Wright who's holding up his hands. Just kind of looking around confused. Thinks he's fine where he should be. And that will be booted by Nick Isaac high. And they'll be headed. And we'll get back to John Kara as they'll hit it away. Nine, eight, seven, and that's going to do it for the first overtime here as John Carroll and Otterbein will head to the second one. As both teams will look to try to make some momentum. The first overtime had a lot of deep breaths for both teams. Otterbein had an opportunity on the corner, just couldn't get it. A great stop by Brendan Mower. And you just look at that replay there, and it looks barely in. And just grabbed, goes off to the right. A beautiful play by the goalkeeper of Brandon Moher. Very good goals against average. Only giving up one goal a game. Now both teams will take a timeout. As they look to try to figure out what they need to do. And I think it's just calm and pace. Just got to figure out what you need to go to. Go to your top players. Both of these coaches have a lot of experience in the OAC. And we'll get a quick break in a minute and 15 for both teams. But it's where you tank the advantage and just kind of work the system. You know, you had that first overtime. Know what you saw. Know what you like. Know what you don't like. Now you can go back in the huddle if you're Jason Griffiths. And the head coach of John Carroll, of Dijon Maldovich. You have an opportunity to really talk to your team and try to compose them as they go into the second overtime. Now, the rules are in the first and second overtimes, there's only two. It's ten minutes. And then after that, you're going to go to penalties. And then whoever wins off of those will advance. As this is... Maybe one of the rare occasions in OAC tournament history that both sides, Mount Union, Ohio Northern, and G JCU and Otterbein are all going into the second overtime. Maybe making tournament history here. As the fans are getting loud, they're going to switch sides of the field. Both teams just looking to put an end to this get any opportunity as now the clock stops and we're going to head into the second overtime. Both oppositions looking for any room on this one. So look at Otterbein. Ely's gotten a three shots off. Will Isaac's gotten six. And Wishmeyer... Rudesill have both gotten one as, long, as well as Mariello. The only two shots on goal this entire game have come from 
Ely and Isaac. Just look at what Thompson has been able to do tonight. Played over 100 minutes now, has five saves. And then you look at Mower, 100 minutes and two saves. But he's made probably two of the biggest saves of the night. One of those coming in overtime. And if he doesn't get to it, that's probably the end of the game. Now we're going to go into the second overtime. Another 10 minutes awaits us. And here we go. Both teams going to look to play aggressive. That's what they've been trying to do all night. Otterbein's going to look up the middle, not able to get it there. And we're going to see a player down for Otterbein. And that's Will Isaac, and that's someone you do not want to see on the ground right now. One of your top leaders as he's just kind of hurrying there, rolling around. Looks to be sitting up now. And he'll get up. Kind of walk it off. He's limping a little bit. Players come in to check on him. The clock will stop at 9 minutes and 34 seconds. And Will Isaac will stay out on the pitch. One of the captains. He is not going to leave this the red shirt senior. This is all on the line for him. This could be his last time as an Otterbein soccer player. As he looks to don the jersey another time and make it to the championship game and possibly in the NCAAs as well. As that will be off the head. Casey Thompson tracking that one will put it in his gloves. As Jaden Wright was right there if he messed up. Casey Thompson just taking a breather and now will launch it. Going right to Will Isaac. He'll go up for the header. Not able to get to it. And that will be hit off. And getting to it was Mitchell Patterson. He'll have the ball now. He'll look to get it right past some John Carroll's defenders. And now we're going to see the whistle blown and a free kick awarded to Otterbein. And you just look at this game so far, and if you look at the fouls especially, it's been very lopsided. John Carroll, 15 fouls on the night throughout all of the game and into overtime. Make it 16 now after that one. And Otterbein has six the entire game. And now that will be Will Isaac going in off the header. We're going to see someone fall, and that's going to be the flag comes up. John Carroll now have possession of it. And those fouls in overtime has really created a lot of opportunities for Arbine. We saw on a foul last time, Will Isaac whipped it in in the first overtime. Almost an opportunity for a goal, but a beautiful save by the goalkeeper of Mower. And John Carroll... We'll lose the ball. That'll be right into Will Isaac. He'll get it away. So he'll get it right back to Patterson. And we're going to see a card given out. The fans are going wild. As Otterbein is getting opportunity after opportunity on fouls and cards. By John Carroll just cannot be allowing this, especially going into the second overtime. Saw it happen in the first for the free kick. That almost ended up in a score. Now going to put it Mike, Mark Wishmeyer. He'll have the opportunity on the ball. And the yellow car was to Logan Penton. It's not what you want to see. If you're John Carroll's, that will be right at the 20-yard line. That will have an opportunity there. That will be off. Well, they're going to say is a John Carroll player. Hey, just look at this game so far. John Carroll has five yellow cards throughout this entire game. And that's just been a huge problem for them. You can't... 
Again, yeah, multiple guys, yellow cards, that's red cards, and they're gone. You're going to lose a player off the pitch. And now Will Isaac will get that one in toward the far side, looking for the kick, not able to get there. And now they'll get it back is Otterbein. They're going to look again for it, go all the way up. And that's not going to be able to get grabbed by Muller, but it doesn't matter. One of his teammates kicks it away. And as Coleman had the ball, just pushes it. Now we'll see the trip. And it looked a little, and John Carroll fans now not happy. As Kelly will whip it in now off the head. Now getting back to it is Otterbein. Looking up the middle of the field, not able to get on it is Hayden Vu. Under six minutes to go in this one. Both teams just being very aggressive right now. Casey Thompson will now have the ball. Five and a half minutes to go. And I'm going to say a push, and the, the fans are not going to be happy with that one. They're very loud in this second overtime. You can hear that one. Going to be a free kick opportunity for John Carroll. Well, Isaac, you can see him clapping there, getting his team ready. It's going to be hit well. That's going to be right in the chest of Casey Thompson. A little bit interesting of a decision by Kelly, who was underneath that one. Casey Thompson going to hit that one very far. Getting the header on that one was Kelly. I'll be back out to him. We'll get it right through the middle. Now we'll go out again, slipping. It was number 19, Patrick Koenig. Now Will Isaac will have the ball, one of the leaders on this team, second team All-American. One of the top players for the Cardinals. He's looking to not die. He wants to go on the uniform again. Red shirt senior. You just look at what Will Isaac has done. Four-year letterman and starter, 2022 OAC Forward of the Year, 2021 All-American, three-time All-AC, two-time All-Region, All-Ohio, one of the best players in Division III. And he's going to try to help his team as much as he can, the forward position, taking the most shots on the team. Not afraid to pull the trigger. And we'll be kicked out. That's going to be in favor of Otterby now. Three minutes to go. Now Mount Union, Ohio Northern will go into third overtime. Seems to be three overtimes. They are still tied 0-0. And now will be right in the chest of Muller. Muller now will dribble the ball on the turf. Kind of point to his guys. Wants them to go deep down the pitch. As the referee is not going to be happy with that one. Will Isaac was trying to use his body to block the ball. And there's going to be a little bit of confusion right now. The referee kind of having to tell Mower where to go. 
Still a minute and 52, really dragging out the clock. The fans are not happy about that. That one will be hit deep. Getting underneath that one is Mark Wishmeyer. That will be taken as Will Isaac will flick it. And a minute and 24 now. He's stalling out the clock now. Be a throw in for Kelly. Kelly will go deep down the right side looking for a right. That will be hit out by Rude Cell. Less than a minute to go. And this will be the best opportunity. You can both teams looking for it all. And we're going to see foul call. We're going to see another card come out. Bunch of players huddled around. It's going to be a yellow card on John Carroll. Now Casey Thompson will put the ball right at 24-yard line. And that will be Patrick Koenig who gets the yellow card. Make it, make it six yellow cards throughout this game for John Carroll playing very, very aggressive. And going for that one. That won't be caught by Mower. 15 seconds left. So he'll boot that one down the pitch. And Thompson will catch that one. That will end at the second overtime. Ladies and gentlemen, with the game still tied, a friendly reminder, we will be proceeding to a best of five penalty kick shootout. And now we will be proceeding to a best of five, a penalty kick shootout. And you now look at Mount Union and ONU. Mount Union made... The shot attempt on their first penalty kick. And then ONU, William Schaefer made his as well. They're tied 1-1 with five kicks to go. Now we're going to take a quick timeout on Otterbein TV before we come back with five opportunities for either team on Otterbein TV.
Welcome into Memorial Stadium. Uh, five opportunities, and here we go. Whoever wins this game is going to face Ohio Northern as they win 4-3 to three on penalty kicks. Number two seed. And on the shot against Casey Thompson. That's high. That's the first miss. That's number 19, Patrick Koenig, who goes way too high on the kick. And that'll start it off with a miss. Oh my goodness, that's not the way you want to start it. If you're them. If you're GC, JCU. And now, the redshirt senior. An All-American, three-time All-OAC. Will Isaac will come up. So I'll have it against Brendan Mower. He'll line it up, the whistle blows. And here we go. And he makes it. That's one. Goal. And Will Isaac hyping up the crowd. They're all down at the fence line. And here we go. JCU needs to make this one. That's one for Otterbein. Now all on Casey. And next up to take it is Nicholas Gracia, the midfielder. He's up against Casey. He looks to level it. Gracia takes a deep breath. He runs up. Here we go. And he goes to the right. And that levels it. 1-1 one, one each. I'll bring back up Mower. Now this will be Mark Wishmeyer, the senior from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Lefty. It's going to be a big one right here. Already one miss for John Carroll. And he makes it. Goal. And what a shot by Wishmeyer. Put it exactly where he wanted. That's two. John Carroll will look to level it again. But they already have one miss. After a high shot by Patrick Koenig. This will bring up Jack Fote. Fote, the forward, the junior from Erie, Pennsylvania. He'll line it up. He'll go quick, and he'll make that one all to the right. Casey Thompson just trying to get himself worked up on that one. Claps it off. I'll make it 2-2. Otterbein will go for their third shot. John Carroll has missed one, made two. Honor Bine has made two. Colin Oneacre, the sophomore midfielder from Indianapolis, Indiana, will line it up. Well, we're getting some jumping jacks in. Fix the hair, and here we go. And that's missed. That'll go wide right. That will go wide right for Otterbein. He had him. Mower was going to his right, left on the screen. Just need to put it in the right position. Now both teams have missed one. Tied at two apiece. The fourth shot for JCU. Will run up. We'll take it, and that will be to the right. And that was Logan Pennon, the midfielder on that one. And he'll have made three now. He'll get one more opportunity after this. Otterbein needs to make it. This is huge for them. We'll 
we'll see Dominic and Radica come out. 3-2 John Carroll. Here we go. Otterbein looking for it. They'll get it. Tied up. 3-3. Three, three. John Carroll needs to make it. Casey Thompson, this is your opportunity for the biggest save of his career so far. And he'll face Brandon Swan, the graduate midfielder from North Royalton, Ohio. Casey Thompson, opportunity, the fifth and final shot. He'll get the stop. And the save by Casey Thompson. He pumps the fist and walks off. Otterbein can win it. They need to make one. And now all the pressure is on the sophomore 5'11 goalkeeper from North Ridgeville, Ohio, and St. Edwards High School, Brendan Amower. Whoever wins this will play ONU. They won a 4-3 in their penalty kicks. Carter Ely will come out. Here he goes. And he'll make it. Otterbein has punched their ticket to the OAC Tournament Championship game. They win off of penalties 4-3. And the stop by Casey Thompson is how it all ends. They'll face Ohio Northern on a Saturday. They run to their fans. And what a season it has been for Otterbein. What a two stops on the penalty kicks. One goes high and then another stopped. Perfectly timed by Casey Thompson. And you look at the replay by Ely. As Mower predicts it correctly but goes underneath his arms and just raises it. And this is the stop. A beauty by the defense as Brendan Swan couldn't get it by Casey Thompson and that will do it as Otterbein will walk off and defeat John Carroll it will be 0-0 but after two overtimes and the penalty shootout they win 4-3 that will do it from us at Otterbein TV I've been Micah Flack along with you and from us and the crew and we say good night